All right, welcome back. Let's answer your questions now. Jim Labenthal coming to you first from Jeff in Palm Bay, Florida. Jim L., it looks like Greenbrier might finally be breaking out. Are you still bullish, and is the dividend safe? Um, I am still bullish. Uh, this week, the CEO bought 100,000 shares, almost $2 million worth of stock. That's a very bullish sign. Um, this management really knows how to get through crises like this. They've been there before. I think the dividend is safe, but let me be honest here. Let me, let me be frank, rather. I'm always honest. I wouldn't buy this for the dividend. Who knows? If this, if this crisis goes on, maybe they have to cut it. But the price appreciation from here to two years from now is, is very extreme. So don't worry about the dividend. That's not why to be in it. Wow, the Farmer Jim effect, right? In full effect on our screen right now. Greenbrier Company's getting Jeez. a little lift. You still got it, Farmer Jim. The management there is terrific. The management <laughs> there is terrific. <laughs> All right, Steve Weiss, coming to you from Jeet in Canada. What are your thoughts on Facebook and Microsoft with the amazing run they've had? Are they overpriced to buy now? And do you still see much potential for further growth? I do. I see tremendous potential for further growth. I'm not putting new money into either of those. What I recently put new money into or added to was Infi. And that's another way to play both those, particularly Microsoft. In fact, almost 20% of their revenues come from Microsoft Cloud. And by far, Microsoft is the best fundamentally positioned company in the market, I believe, and it's hitting on all cylinders with great execution. All right, but Shannon, wait for a pullback before buying either. Sorry, Weiss. Shannon, Grant in Michigan wants to know about IBM. Is it a good, is it a good buy below its 200-day moving average or wait until it's above it? No, I think it's a good buy here. We just bought the stock recently. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity here. It's a, a strong dividend yield trading at a pretty cheap valuation. And there's opportunities to monetize for them in AI and cloud. So I would, I would buy it here. I wouldn't wait too long to find that, that perfect price. All right. Uh, Megan, to you from Chris in Philadelphia. As a long-term investor, you hear that index funds are the better investment and perhaps a few individual stocks on the side. If that is true, is there a percentage breakdown in the portfolio that I should have? It's a great question. There's no one specific answer. There's no magic number. Uh, for our clients, we advise around 75% active management across a diversified portfolio of different asset classes. But I would say that active management works uh, at different times and for different asset classes. You definitely want to look into it for those more inefficient asset classes like U.S. small cap, emerging markets, even municipal bonds. Um, and then on the passive side, that's evolved a lot. It's not just an ETF for broad emerging markets. There's a lot of smart beta where you can kind of have a more passive vehicle, lower fee, but have some strategy as well. All right, Sichi, lastly to you, Greg in Falls Church, Virginia. I'm looking at the oil refiners as a short to medium trade. They pay pretty good dividends also. Thoughts on the group? Like it. Think that's a great idea. They also have strong balance sheets. And, uh, you know, I think oil prices are at unsustainably uh, low levels right now. So we, we've started to add some of that exposure as an example of some of the laggards that you talked about earlier that give you optionality to a cyclical recovery. All right. Good stuff.